In this tutorial, uh, I'm going to show you how to create a simple t-shirt graphic that has a, a theme um, in, for the purposes of this demonstration, I'm going to be doing kind of a, a nature theme using elements that pertain to my home state of Minnesota. Uh, you can use uh, any any theme or objects, themes, elements that you like for your particular design. Um, on the left hand side here I already have my various vector elements already ready to go just to save time. Um, just a bunch of vector pine trees, some moose, deer, and uh, yeah we'll we'll use most of these elements to create our design. So starting out I want to create my background shapes to create kind of a retro vintage look so we're just going to create a rectangle we'll center it up in the page by hitting P and See, we're gonna bring this down to about here, scale it up a little bit, and we're gonna use the blend tool to blend these two objects. And we don't need that many steps. Uh, let's see, we want one, two, three, and then a large one. So we are going to fatten up the bottom part here. Yeah, that should work. Uh, uh, so I'm going to end up with one, two, three, four, four horizontal blocks that are going to be evenly distributed. So with um, them selected, hit Control K to separate them. I want to ungroup these middle ones. I'm going to select these bottom two and I want to weld them into one solid shape. And then, to get an even distribution, I want to go to the Align and Distribute Docker here, and I want to distribute them vertically, like so. Uh, hmm. Yeah, not quite. We'll just quickly do that. I want to get a little bit Closer spacing. Yeah, that'll work. Uh, so we'll just redo those last few steps. And select them and distribute. And we'll just move this down and do it again. Alright, that should work. So we're just going to group these. Again, hit P on the keyboard to center it in the workspace here. And ungroup. And right here is my kind of vintage retro color palette that I'm going to be using for the purposes of this design. So I want to give the each block its own color. So and I want to, the next step is to, I want to create essentially a, a tree line going along the bottom part of the, the rectangle shapes here. And so I'm just going to grab all of these, bring them over, and I'm just going to start laying them out in a pleasing manner that's kind of spaced accordingly so at this point I'm just gonna speed up the, the workflow because this is all very subjective on the placement of the various trees and sizes and everything so I'll do that quick and then we'll get back into it.
Okay. So now that I have the tree line kind of roughly in place, I was just kind of trying to create a left to right movement where the trees go smaller to bigger because um, we're going to have our kind of focal point kind of on the right side here um, once we're done. Um, but once, um, once you have kind of the trees and everything or whatever you're doing all in place, I'm just going to go ahead and group them all into one, uh, remove that red outline. And what I want to do is I want to get rid of all the excess uh, tree parts that go beyond the, the borders of our kind of rectangle here. So first thing I want to do is make sure that all these kind of bottom elements will be one solid color here. So I'm just going to add a rectangle shape here and what I'm going to do is with all these selected I'm going to weld them into one giant shape eventually um, yeah well, I'll just go ahead and do that now and what I want to do is take this bottom rectangle just going to duplicate it and scale it up at the same time. Um, yeah. Then grabbing the corner here, I'm just going to scale and duplicate it again at the same time. I'm going to shift and move that to the bottom. Grab both of these and then I'm going to combine them into one shape. I think it was just kind of a frame cut out here. So um, then I'm going to select the trees and just trim off all the excess. Once that's done, you can get rid of that. So now, uh, uh, now those trees are perfectly trimmed off at the edge of our rectangle here. Um, I'm going to select that and get rid of the outlines there, just so we can start to see how everything's just kind of shaping up here. Um, next thing I want to do is I'm going to bring my, over my text that I want to use. I'm just going to center it up by selecting the rectangle here and hitting C on the keyboard. That'll center up the text to the, the rectangle. Uh, next thing, I want to add in a deer or two. Going to have the deer kind of on the right hand side here, and he's gonna he's gonna look give the impression of the the negative shape here. Just duplicate, flip horizontally. Just make this one a little smaller so it looks like there's some perspective in the scene, some depth. Bring them a little like so. And one more thing we want to do is create a sun object. So these on the back. That's place this so it kind of cuts off there so it looks like it's uh, either gives the impression of either early morning or late evening kind of sunrise or sunset uh, would be the interpretation of the uh, viewer So, all right, so with all of that in place, we have our kind of simple themed t-shirt graphic. Um, 
to get it ready for t-shirt use. Um, you just want to bring over a test image here of a just a generic shirt and we're going to bring all of it over uh, let's do this bring that up there bring this down here let's scale down oh, all right so let's duplicate that just scale it down. The beauty of working in vector is you don't lose any resolution on your graphic, your images. So, so the what you'll notice right away is the the white elements here when designing the the graphic alone on a white background. I wanted those, those, the sun and the two deer here to be negative shapes, um, not to like, so that they would um, basically whatever the background color is would show through those parts. So while you could trim these off so that you don't have these feet hanging over and you don't have uh, the lines in the white going through the, the negative space here um, that would be one way to go about it but for this design I'm just going to subtract out trim out the these elements from the horizontal bars and the trees so I'll take this and trim off from these two background uh, rectangle bars and then just delete the sun and we're going to do the same thing with the deer with on the trees and these bars here so we'll do trim that out and then trim from that then we can get rid of our deer so now we have uh, actually one other thing I want to do um, well, so you can see how the now we have just those elements being negative shapes in the design. Um, one thing I want to change is I'm going to give the the text a different color. Um, and actually, I want to give the trees this color. Forgot to do that. All right. There we go. Um, so depending on the color of the shirt, this text is a little hard to read. So maybe I'll give it this kind of darker purplish color just so it stands out on here. And when designing um, t-shirt graphics, uh, being aware of the color of shirts you're going to be putting on it will help kind of define or will determine what colors you use for the various elements. Um, the lighter orange was a little, made this text a little hard to read on a gray background. Um, but like on a black background, that orange text would have been just fine. Um, yeah. So it's just a, a very simple t-shirt graphic that you can create yourself to upload to a print-on-demand website and start selling, sell your designs. Um, yeah, hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you did, please like, comment, share the video, subscribe to the channel. We'll, that'll help me increase the audience and do more videos like these kind of walkthroughs. Um, but yeah, if you if you liked it, uh, leave a comment below, and uh, yeah, thanks for watching.